my phone How about you give up one of your guys? Ah, it's not working. Like you got to be following us in the convoy. Okay, right. Yeah, we're all, we're all, that, that's part of the, you've probably never done anything as stupid as this before, but part right, of but the, um, talk to you here. Can uh, you hear me? allure of tonight yeah, I can hear. is yeah, we're I just doing you something in -game, absolutely buddy. Yeah, fucking I don't know ridiculous. Why. I'm interested in how people can organise themselves to achieve things and run more complex operations in DayZ. It's proven to be really difficult, and very challenging, uh, much like herding cats when you're trying to do it in this game. Every time it seems to fall apart and the more people are involved, the worse it gets. On 26th of November this year, 2021, 23 people came together on a Banov DayZ server to do a vehicle convoy and base raid. Although it was a bit of a mess, it was ultimately one of the more successful attempts at getting this many people to cooperate that I've seen in this game, um, despite the whole thing being improvised in a fairly short amount of time with not a lot of planning. I'm going to suggest how I think it could have been done, um, though they were already doing some of the things I'm going to talk about. The stream recorded by Boydie is about five hours long. So hopefully someone's going to put together a short summary video of how everything unfolded. If they do, I'll put a link in the description of this video. So make sure you keep an eye out for that as well. In this video, I'm going to use this whole event as a kind of case study and we'll more broadly discuss teams and how to run um, a large number of people in a group in DayZ. Those who are involved in the event may or may not find it that useful. Um, it's all just suggestions and how I'd ideally, in my imagination, I'd like to run things. Some people might think I'm going a bit far and taking things too seriously, but it's all in the name of fun. I just enjoy this sort of thing, so please indulge me for a bit. But there's also the fact that if you're going to run an event that is this complex, it will fall apart unless you do at least some of this stuff. So we'll look at four things that I think on their own can completely hamstring your group if you're not doing them right. We're going to look at planning, leadership, organisation, communications and situational awareness. So first of all, planning. There was not much planning involved, as I said before. Basically, the idea was to build up a convoy, drive to a base and raid it, and they wanted to park two trucks at the entrance for cover for the people going in to enter. And then other players would take up positions around the base to provide cover. It's actually a good idea to keep plans as simple as possible because everything on top of that becomes exponentially more complex. Your plans also need to be flexible and you need contingency plans for when parts of your main plan fail. Anyway, the main objective was to break into the base and take their stuff. It doesn't really matter how it happens as long as you find a way to get it done. So generally, you'd want to be prepared to improvise if it isn't working out how you planned it to, as long as you're working toward that main objective. I would organize all, all the players into three main teams, the entry team, the support team, and perimeter team. Their roles and responsibilities would be quite different to each other, and they're based around the areas that I've specified in my last video, which would be the inside, vantage points, and outside. So watch that video to see what I'm talking about. I won't cover that in this video. Part of the planning process needs to include the naming of landmarks, positions, buildings, anything of interest. For example, apartment buildings 1, 2 and 3, the South Hill, the North East Hill and whatever. If the whole team knows these references, you can reduce confusion and increase your speed of communication massively. You can also assign people to these positions or move them around just by using these references. You don't have to have a, a whole conversation in the moment describing where things are and where you are. Logistics were actually a real problem in this event, which was really interesting, mainly because it relied on vehicles, which are complex things with, that have multiple points of failure. Vehicles broke down and ran out of fuel. They got shot at. The convoy split up at one point. They had to figure that out. And all that happened despite quite a bit of time spent at the, at the start uh, trying to ensure logistics were taken care of. Also, uh, once you get your vehicle, I need everyone to do a um, full check of the vehicle. Make sure you have a jerry can um, of fuel, uh, sorry, not a jerry can of fuel, um, a jerry can of water in case you have any crashes or your radiator gets leaked. Um, make sure that you have a screwdriver um, to remove any car parts that may be damaged, um, that you have a tire iron. Um, we don't have a lot of spare wheels, unfortunately. Um, we've got a whole... Well, I think we do for the Gunter. We may have for the Gunter. We could probably put a couple of them in. Although a couple of people were making most of the decisions, there was no real accepted leader. 
in the end they cooperated surprisingly well and achieved more than I would expect even though you had multiple chefs running the kitchen but generally if you're gonna come together and work toward a common goal um, you can't be individualistic especially when you've got this many people you have to become part of a sort of hive mind of the team that is focused on on the goal on the single goal everything you do has to be for the group and not for yourself this type of thinking applies in the military it applies in sports teams in policing in business anytime we're working in organized groups if there's no leader you'll have multiple people disagreeing and talking over each other and trying to get their own way one of the limiting factors in a in a fight in a battle is time you have to minimize the time that you take to make decisions there's no time for debate there's no time to discuss things you have to make a decision and act as a whole act as a group and this is this is basically why it's better to have a single person who can who can make a final call that others can act on if you're not acting together you're not a team you're just a collection of individuals who are roughly in the same place that doesn't mean the leader should micromanage in fact if the team has been briefed and trained well enough, uh, the leader shouldn't have to say or do much except monitor the situation, make some higher level decisions and basically keep the team on track. And they also do need to listen to feedback and advice from the team. Whenever there's a problem, you can appraise the team leader or the commander or whatever, and they should be seeking advice from the people they're leading. Don't get emotional. Don't make it about you. This makes me think of an old DayZ clan called TLA, Team Live Action. It was run by old mate Vanguard and uh, Lithian, and they had an excellent little system where they'd train new members and then have them take turns at leading. And it seemed to work really well. So I actually recommend, if you've got a, a clan, a little group there, um, rotating people as a team leader and give everyone a go. So those who don't like how others lead and complain, they quickly find out how difficult it can be. And once they have a go, they'll often work better as a team member in the future. So it's not about ego and just about having people obeying your commands to make you feel good. It's about achieving the objectives of the group. In this instance, if I had these the three teams running that I mentioned before, I'd probably assign a team leader for each team and one commander to keep the whole thing under control. Yeah, that's all right. Just for the just for the guys, just for the guys that are here, we've got uh, a four-man team that is going to be holding north side. So we need to break up, we need to sort of uh, sort out southern, eastern and western teams now. So on to comms. Communications were a bit of a problem in this event, especially during times of stress. They started in the beginning using Discord as one channel and then in-game radios which appeared to be split up between vehicles. The radios became difficult to hear, so eventually they were passing pretty much all communication through a single Discord channel. So you ended up having, for example, two people talking about swapping ammo or whatever or breaking down a wall while others are literally in a gunfight and trying to call out positions. And they're all having these conversations across each other. If we had the three teams I suggested before, we'd need, we'd need four different channels to manage them. One channel for each team because they'll need to discuss things between each other which are pretty much useless for everyone else to hear. Uh, the fourth channel is the main channel where only operational things that are relevant to the commander and the team as a whole um, should be broadcast. In my opinion, I think you should get into the habit of repeating back information. For example, if the commander says on the main channel, entry team, collect grenades from the truck, the team leader would say, entry team, copy, collecting grenades from the truck. This does three things. The commander knows that you've received the correct message. You know that you've received the correct message because you're repeating it back to confirm it. And then the rest of the group, everyone else, is informed of what is going on. It might seem redundant, but people often miss things the first time they're said, especially under stress. And conversely, communicate whenever you're going to do something and have your team leader or commander repeat it back. Leaving or entering buildings are a very good time to do this so that if anyone is seen outside those positions, you know that it's not a friendly. Whenever you're going to move, you advise everyone that you're going to move and they know not to shoot you. Okay. We've got a player coming up the door. And me, 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 me. Maybe with the revolver. Two maybe. people coming in from the south. Is that our boys? Yeah. What's the um, situation? Where are they now, guys? We need comms. No we need info. Them. Some a uh, couple west, west last, of last the road. Last location. So around the, around, around west. the tower, one round the tower, the, one with the building, east. Uh, east. I'm in a building. Apartments. Wiggle for me. I'm wiggling. No, oh, that was you. Fuck. Sorry, you didn't wiggle when I said wiggle, and then you wiggled when I shot. Fuck. Did you kill him? Yeah, I did. Next is situational awareness. 
you'll find people are pretty laissez-faire about calling out their own position and knowing each other's, their friendlies' positions until the shit hits the fan. And then they really want to know where everyone is. The main thing you need to know is where your people are and what they're doing. If you don't know where your people are at all times, you've lost control. And once you realize you don't know where they are, you can literally feel the anxiety building because you're lost in the fog and you've got no situational awareness. Naming the different parts of your team, naming landmarks and positioning your people based on these landmark references makes it so much easier to gain situational awareness. So if we were using all the things I've been talking about, ideally it might sound something like this. You'd have the, the support team leader might say, uh, those in the apartment building, can you move to the fire station? They'd reply, copy, moving to the fire station. And then when they're leaving the building, they'd say, friendly's leaving apartment now. The team leader would repeat back, copy, friendly's leaving apartment. And then as the players are approaching the fire station, they'd say, friendly's entering fire station. Team leader repeats back, copy, friendly's entering fire station. That might seem like a lot of redundant repetition and a waste of time, but it's actually far more efficient if you're not going to implement any of the stuff that we've discussed. The alternative is that anytime you leave a building, someone's going to mistake you for an enemy. Anytime you enter a building, someone's going to think you're an enemy. Anytime you call out a position, people aren't going to know where you are. They're not going to know where the enemy is. And I've seen this happen over and over again with large groups of players. And that's why this event in this stream to me appeared way more successful than it normally turns out. It was actually impressive compared to what I've seen in the past. And on. Oh, it's badly damaged. That's good. He just run into double red. Guys? Yep, 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 yep. Is that the one that's up here near the heel? No, no, it's down near the industrial. He's scared. Double he red. Um, someone's looted the other corpse. Double red, guys, dead, 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 dead. Good shot. Watch for more, watch for more. So I hope some of that helps. I hope some of it makes sense. Thanks for watching. Um, like, subscribe, check out my Patreon, all that stuff. Cheers.